Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, we're going to talk about how bad Evergrande's crisis will be. We'll talk about reactions in the market and in the cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency is actually going to help us a lot here. The reason I say this is first, I ran through a thought experiment earlier in the course member live stream. We talked about what could the potential worst case scenario be in the Evergrande crisis. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my envisioning of what could potentially be the worst case scenario for the Evergrande crisis. Then I'm going to talk about some inflection points happening in the market right now. And then we're going to talk about what I actually think in terms of how bad the Evergrande crisis will be. Now I could be wrong, this is of course just my opinion, but let's get right into it. Okay, folks, so the first thing that we did in the thought experiment is we came to the conclusion that in an Evergrande style collapse, the very first thing that's likely to happen is that bond prices for Evergrande's company would collapse and Evergrande's stock price would collapse. We'll take a look at those in just a moment and we'll look for inflection points. Then we would expect real estate prices in China to collapse and we would expect to see an inflection point to the upside or downside depending on how bad things actually end up getting. Then we would expect to see bond yields go up, not just in China, because remember when people sell bonds, their price goes down, more sellers drive prices down, which pushes yields up. We'd expect to see, see yields go up, and I specifically want to track the US market because there are a lot of individuals in China who invest in US dollar denominated debt, and so a sell-off in bonds will lead to rates going up or yields going up in the United States as well. That has the effect essentially of increasing mortgage interest rates in, uh, in the United States. And we know that real estate is linked to mortgage interest rates to the point where if interest rates fall 1% or sorry, go up 1%, home prices could fall about 10%. You've got about that one to 10 connection there. Uh, and this could really affect US real estate prices. And when real estate prices in the United States start coming down, we often see stock prices also start coming down. And lately, we've seen stocks of company like Zillow, Open Door, and Redfin start coming down, which some are speculating is almost the stock market potentially trying to predict a fall in real estate prices. But is that related to the Evergrande crisis? Well, let's take all of this apart because we've heard a lot of things about the Evergrande crisis. The best thing to do is just get right into it and follow the updates. So first, we know that Evergrande likely missed a $45.2 million interest payment. Just an interest payment. Could you imagine that having a $45 million payment? It's like a $45 million mortgage to make and you missed the freaking payment? Your credit score probably going down. But don't worry, Evergrande's credit score is already junk. This, by the way, comes after the fact that Evergrande missed a payment, actually missed two payments last Monday, missed a payment last Thursday, or likely missed a payment last Thursday, just like this one. Evergrande last Thursday said they sent the payment, but we never got evidence that it was actually sent. And we never got evidence that the money was actually received. So that's why we say it was likely missed. But what's interesting is how certain things are reacting in the market. So remember how I said the first thing we would expect to see is a movement in the stock price? Well, uh, take a look at this. When we hop on over to the stock price right here, we go to a year-to-date decline of about 79%. And while there are fluctuations on the minute-to-minute, hour-to-hour, take a look at how Evergrande stock has actually essentially bottomed out around September 21st which is where we had a little bit more of peak fear. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom into that a little bit. Let's go into the one month here. And even though we have fluctuations on the up and the downside, and we wanna be careful for a potential double dip, usually the big first inflection point is one we really wanna pay attention to. It's kind of like in the COVID recession, our markets sort of hit bottom on March 23rd and again on April 3rd. But the April 3rd bottom was a little more shallow than the March 23rd bottom in 2022, and then we took off from there. And so this is something, in my opinion, I'm gonna be paying attention to, the fact that we just got an inflection point in 3333.hk, that's the stock ticker symbol. The easiest way to do is just type into Google uh, 3333.hk, or if you type it into the URL bar, type the word Google first, because otherwise it tries to take you to some weird website. Uh, we could also do this with 6666. This is a China's, uh, China Evergrande's EV group. Let's take a look at this one. So take a look at this one. This is the uh, EV group here. And if we go to 
year to date to start with. We're down about 41%, but take a look at that similar inflection point. We're from the bottom here, we've actually seen about a 23% rise. I suppose it's also worth looking at that here. Let's go from the bottom. We've seen about a 28% rise. So we've started to actually see an inflection point in the price of the stock. That's despite the fact that again today, we missed another debt payment, or in China's case, that'd be yesterday. Then let's do this. The next thing I talked about was crypto. We'll take a look at coin market cap, and I really like using crypto as a catalyst tool for understanding what's going on with, uh, with, with China. Because China, while it's always made headlines for crackdowns, China has some of, and has historically had, some of the top 10 volumes for crypto. Some citizens have in the past moved closer to power plants to profit from cheap electricity so they can mine electricity. You've got a lot of hodlers in China. China's one of the top 10 hodler countries. In fact, I think it's almost top five. Uh, and even though you've got a lot of this drama going on with, again, China banning crypto transactions or financial institutions from working with crypto, you've got a lot of crypto investors and hodlers in China. And so when we see sell-offs in crypto pricing, sometimes, in my opinion, that could be a sign of stress related to China, such as the Evergrande crisis. That's why I said that crypto could fall under the Evergrande crisis, and that's why I've been saying that for over a week and a half now to two weeks as we've been covering the Evergrande crisis. We're also seeing some money flow into decentralized exchanges, which makes a lot of sense that we would get away from centralized finance to sort of still be able to invest in cryptocurrencies. Uh, in China. But what's more important is the signal right now of cryptocurrencies for this Evergrande crisis. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the trading view history here and we're going to look at the day chart and uh, take a look at the day chart here for uh, Bitcoin. The Evergrande crisis really came to light closer to the, the third and fourth week of September, where we are now. And we really had a pain day for crypto here on the 20th, where we really sold down. And we had another pain day on the 24th. And again, here in the last couple days, or, or about uh, three to four days ago, we also had pain days. These were, these were larger sell-off days. It's easier to look at this on the one hour candlestick, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna jump on over to the one hour candlestick, and you can see here, this is a September 7th sell-off. We had a lot of crypto liquidations over here. Then we started getting the Evergrande fear, and this is over here what I really call the Evergrande contagion for cryptocurrencies. And I believe that crypto uh, is sort of a barometer for the madness that's going on in China, although I don't want to say that it's the only barometer, uh, or that Evergrande is somehow so powerful that it can solely controls the pricing of crypto. That's not what I'm saying. But I do believe that crypto sells down on bad news, especially regarding the potential of Tether holding uh, Evergrande uh, bonds, which we've heard that Tether say they don't. Uh, so anyway, so we've seen with fear in the markets, crypto sell down, and that similar fear that we get anytime there's sort of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, uh, or any kind of new negative publication about Evergrande is something that we do see. So on the 24th, we saw sell downs here, and we've seen sell downs here on Monday and Tuesday as well in crypto. Today was when we had that bond payment that was missed again, or likely missed, and we, again, we saw some of the lows, Bitcoin around 41,200. But we're starting to see this inflection point up again. At the same point as we're starting to see this inflection point up in the stock. Now, no guarantees that this little inflection point here is anything special. It's just worth noting that we're starting to see crypto move up at the same time as we're seeing the inflection points in uh, 3333 and 6666. Again, the stock is down 5.1% today, so some fluctuations here expected. But again, up 28% from the dip here, right? Uh, and up 23% on the EV dip uh, for Evergrande. But let's do another thing, because I mentioned after the stock and crypto, after that we would talk about real estate in China. A little harder to measure real estate prices in China, so we're going to skip that one. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 10-year treasury trend. Let's take a look at the 10-year treasury. The 10-year treasury, oh, we want to get yields, so 10-year treasury yield, not the actual bond pricing. Let's go over here to the yield. So uh, take a look at today, which was supposed to be a nervous day with that missed payment. We actually had treasuries trade flat. So even though we had this fear, see right around here when crypto declined and right around the time we started seeing some of those, so, uh, those low, super low stock prices at Evergrande, we started seeing treasury yields in the United States skyrocket, but they've stopped. 
they've stopped skyrocketing. In fact, uh, while we hit a high intraday of about 1.56, right now we sit around 1.51. Remember that has implications for the US real estate and mortgage market. Now, what about the fact that we are seeing some FUD circulate about the potential for BlackRock having a 20 or plus percent or, or yeah, a potentially 20% stake exposed to Evergrande and that really this contagion is just beginning. Well, this is where we actually have to do a little bit of investigative work and dismantle a little bit of FUD that's going around. Because what we're seeing so far, it's just sort of a signpost checkpoint, so far, it looks like we're starting to see some positive inflection points, that the market's going to have enough cash, repo markets have plenty of money, banks have plenty of liquidity, banks are stress tested hard enough, and it looks like so far we are inflecting, but markets are still going to trade on fear. Now I've broken down how we're starting to see some inflection points and who knows, it could be the classic dead cat bounce, right? Where we get an inflection point and really the real peak fear is ahead of us. But folks, what have I been saying? Even this weekend, I made a video, and you can go check this yourself. Fact check me, please. I made a video that got 229,000 views. It's called The Evergrande Crisis, Stocks and Crypto Sell Off. That video, at about 12 minutes into the video, I say, I do not see this being a systemic risk. I think this is going to create a dip, and that is a dip that we're going to want to buy. And I've been putting my money where my mouth is. I've been buying that dip. But, wait a minute. Why is there FUD going around suggesting that maybe BlackRock has one fifth of its assets exposed to Chinese real estate? In fact, somebody sent me this and I was really sussed out by this. I thought there's no way was my immediate reaction. And I found this particular article that they referenced. Here it is. It literally says, the BlackRock fund has a fifth of its assets exposed to China's real estate sector and nearly a third of its portfolio holds high yield debt, also known as junk bonds. Oh my gosh, that sounds really bad. Like if BlackRock, one of the largest investment advisors in the world has a fifth of its assets exposed to Chinese real estate, well that must be really, really bad because that could spell big trouble in the United States, right? Too bad it's wrong. It's blatant misinformation because the person who, or, or at least the people who are circulating this have misread, unfortunately, the article that they are reading. And so let's break down how there's misinformation circulating about BlackRock's holdings uh, in, in Evergrande and BlackRock's holdings that are exposed to Chinese real estate. So let's go into that detail. It's worth knowing this kind of detail because FUD spreads so much faster than fact and it takes me so much longer to dismantle the madness and insanity that sometimes circulates like wildfire. But that's why you subscribe to this channel. So this screenshot and misinformation actually comes from this article in this particular website here. It's financialreviewafr.com. Uh, BlackRock Fidelity Funds Suffer Exodus on Evergrande Fears. And what this article refers to where it says that BlackRock, the Black, it literally says the BlackRock Fund. Uh, there it is. The BlackRock Fund has one fifth of its assets exposed to Chinese real estate. Oh my gosh, but it's the biggest investment advisor in, in the United States. It's got $9.5 trillion under assets. That's so big. And Fidelity is the other big one, which they also talk. The Fidelity Fund, oh my gosh, includes uh, some of its largest holdings in China's real estate companies. Oh my gosh, Fidelity's got 4.2 trillion under management. These are huge funds, and if they're exposed to Chinese real estate, then, then America's institutions and their investments are going to plummet. Everything's going to crash. That's kind of when, when you misread articles, like the walk away impression. And I think that's why those videos get shared. But it's wrong because this article doesn't talk about BlackRock in total. It doesn't talk about uh, Fidelity in total. It talks about these specific funds like the Fidelity China High Yield Fund. Or in the case of BlackRock, it talks specifically about the BlackRock Global Funds China Bond uh, Fund. So in other words, this article saying that a fifth of BlackRock assets are exposed to China's real estate sector is not BlackRock in total. It's just this fund. This particular fund has uh, uh, $9.2 billion dollars under management, that's a, that's a good amount, it's $9.2 billion, but it's a far cry from $9.5 trillion that BlackRock has under management, which if I multiply this by 100 to get a percentage, we are talking about 0.09% of 
of BlackRock's assets under management are in this Chinese fund that BlackRock has, this Chinese high yield fund. And of that, 25% is exposed to China's real estate. Like, it's a drop in the bucket. And if you zoom out even more and you're like, okay, well, how much does BlackRock have invested into Evergrande? Like 1% of their assets. It's a drop in the bucket. The same thing is true of Fidelity. Fidelity has $4.2 trillion in assets under management, but uh, in their fund, uh, hold on, 4.2 trillion, there we go. In their fund, they only have 2.4 billion, which means 0.057% of Fidelity's money is actually in the fund, in this junk bond fund that this article is talking about. So somebody basically took an article about a fraction of 1% of BlackRock and Fidelity's holdings and turned it into a misinformation video to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the United States about the United States market. And it was really a misunderstanding of the article itself. Just to show you an example, here's one of the uh, marketing brochures on this high yield fund. And uh, it's got a 1.2 management fee. You can see here the fund size, $2.4 billion. You've got here, it's Fidelity Funds, China's high yield fund. Yay. And if you scroll over here, you can actually see what the top 10 holdings are. And that, yeah, look, it's a China fund. It makes sense. It's got 61% exposed to China. I'm surprised it's not all, like, it's not 100% China. And you might ask, well, why do people invest in this kind of stuff? It's because the yield is 6.9%. So people are like, yay, I get a lot of dividends, but I'm investing in garbage. In fact, you can, like, the disclosure literally tells you you're investing in garbage. Look, credit rating exposure. Triple A bonds? Nah, we don't want any of those. How about double A bonds? Nah. How about A bonds? Okay, 2%. How about BBB bonds? Triple B rated bonds? Sure, 2%. How about BB bonds? Yeah, now we're in junk bonds. Sure, 34% exposure to those. B bonds? Yeah, we'll take 37% of those too. You're literally investing in junk bonds. Like just for giggles, here's what junk bond means. Anything under triple B rated is considered junk. So if it's less than a capital BBB or a capital BAA, then it's junk. And what you'll notice here is if you go to the pamphlet, BBB or BAA, 2%. Everything below that is junk. And that's where most of the money is invested, is in junk. That's the risk you take when you invest in junk. This is not somehow suggesting that bankrupt is about, or a black rock is about to go bankrupt. <laughs> That's a total misunderstanding and a misread of a silly article that really nobody should be talking about. So anyway, you gotta be careful with some of the FUD that spreads, but my bottom line stays consistent. I believe the Evergrande crisis overall is overblown in terms of its global contagion implications. Uh, and, and this is really just based on me looking for inflection points. I'm not trying to trust Jerome Powell or uh, Christine Lagarde over at the ECB. Uh, but I will say uh, these inflection points could, could shift. They could shift back to the downside. In the meantime, I'm going to keep doing research. I'll keep sharing and breaking apart FUD if I see it. Uh, I'll also correct misinformation if I see it. And in the meantime, I hope you buy the dip. On, on things that uh, are not Evergrande. <laughs> uh, although, hey, maybe uh, maybe it's uh, by the dip opportunity you know, if, if you had like an insanely high risk tolerance. Just for giggles also, know that you could look up what BlackRock is exposed to. You could look up their 13F filing and you could literally see about, I think we want to say about $3.7 trillion of their investment assets are over here in stocks. And you can Google this stuff. So just Google. Uh, 13F BlackRock filing. And if you wanted to go through here and see how much Apple or Microsoft or Amazon or Tesla or whatever they own, you could do that. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.